Hi, I'm Minnie. And I'm Gnomes. And today we're cosplaying Zack and Cloud from Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. For the most part, they're the same costume. So, talk about your wig. This was a Mari wig from the shop Coscraft. It's a UK wig store. I'm not even sure what shade of blonde is, but I know I added two other shades of blonde to it. Then I gave it texture and spiked it using heat, hairspray, some got to be styling gel. I find the main issue when styling any Cloud wig is they'll choose angles when they're shooting it in the game and they'll always make it look aesthetic. So to try and make it look aesthetic from any angle when you're wearing it, it's quite the challenge and you always have to make it suit the wearer specifically because you want to use the wig to sculpt your face. For instance, I don't have a wide face and I use this wig to narrow everything down and give myself more of an oval face. Tell me how you made these big bad boys. These are called pauldrons for one, <laughs> not big bad boys. And they are mostly made of EVA foam for the shape of them, which is darted and cut to shape so that they make a nice little round dome. You can see they are not flat. They were primed with hex flat which is the black part and I used a sponge to apply them so you have this mottled texture which makes them look a bit more like they were beaten to shape and I dry brushed with grey to bring out some of the details for the edges. The very edge is actually strips of leather. It gave just an extra bit of durability to the foam than if I'd used pure foam for the edges as well which I like so it can take a little more stress which is quite important for us. Skip. These little squares, triglides, I just think they add a bit of extra texture and interest. The fastening method for the pauldron onto the leather harness. There are some poppers on the top of the shoulders which you can undo and there's a leather strap underneath this thicker strap to which those shoulder poppers attach. And if I detach it there you can see the popper. Why have I used snake print? Because it's cool. This fabric, however, I chose because it was nice and matte and would blend in and it wouldn't show up too much on camera because you can't really see how in the game these pauldrons stay on. They just seem to float in the middle of the air. And I I did consider using the denim from the trousers to bring the costume together but it's a slightly lighter shade and I felt that it would show up too much in photos and videos. So we can get underneath here you can see these are the little webbing loopies that fasten the pauldron on to the leather strap and allow all this awesome action. The shirt is made of a two by one chunky ribnet which was pretty difficult to find there aren't that many of them available but it's faced on the armholes with elastic to make it nice and tidy and as you can see we have a crew neck at the top here so now we're going to discuss the harness this lovely creation is made out of veg tan leather which i cut dyed beveled the edges um, i can't remember what the tool is called but you run it over the edges to make them smooth and shiny i had to also wet treat it to curve around a waist or curve upwards underneath these leather flaps here there are some leather sliders which again i had to wet treat and shape and glue on these are the leather sliders that allow them to to move up and down on the thin leather strap so you can position them in a desirable place to the individual. These are decorative studs. Here we have a Velcro attachment that meets up very neatly to give you a smooth edge. This is the only place you can see a seam if you've really studied the references carefully. So they had to be designed to be able to get in and out of them whilst only having a back seam here, which is why I have this underpiece that overlaps. And here is our fake magnet. It's made of leather that pops on and off. Ooh, look at it, goes back on. That's chalk that I haven't wiped off because I'm useless apparently. And the great thing about using leather is you can see it has already these natural imperfections in it if we'd used a faux leather or foam it it wouldn't have had those and by dyeing it using a multi-tonal gel antique I've got these beautiful different shades coming through in the leather and scoring these edges allows them to gather an extra dark tint from the dye all this stitching here was done by hand if you look really really closely on prices core references you can see white stitching I am a sucker for punishment so I did that and that is also true of these belts here which in a very very few references you can also see the white stitching going around the edge and again all by hand but i made men do that these buckles i didn't make them but i had to track them down because finding buckles that are accurate to the game pretty hard these are accurate and it's great trousers they're a weird combination of fitted and baggy so they need to be fitted around the hip but they are baggy throughout the length and then gathered at the ankle underneath the boots there's your elasticated bit down the bottom gives you plenty of room to move which is very useful they're made of a crosshatch denim. It was really difficult to find crosshatch denim, but I did. They are a button closure on the crotch. I just find that quite tidy. Just a fan. They're really, really wide waistband and they sit very high. And they have belt loops all the way around at different positions to hold the belts in place. They have enormous pockets. 
boots. You can see there's a base boot underneath which we just bought to have the right sole and then I made zip on boot covers which fold over at the top here and are nicely fitted and sturdy. The fabric was a little unsturdy so I actually backed it with thin EVA foam to give it more support which of course also meant I had to make sure they were nicely lined so that it would be tidy. We also have details of little loopies at the back which are there for reasons I can't fathom but the game says so. I didn't make the gloves. We've now discussed the head to tour of the Clouds Drive and we are going to discuss the head of Zach Fair. Literally just the head because the rest is the same. So how do you make my wig? Well Minnie, we made your wig by getting a base lace front and then we ventilated in an accurate hairline. Now Zach shares a lot of the similar issues with hair that Cloud has in that you can't just look at one reference to the model because what will look aesthetic from one angle won't look aesthetic from another. So you kind of have to come up with a design that's going to look good from all angles. I find a lot of the references it will be too slicked back and you won't be able to see all the detail of all the little spikes so I tend to give them a little bit extra lift and add lots of layers of small spikes throughout and then down the back. And you get this little lovely bang, oh, so cool. With, with patience and trauma. Um, it's heat treated to stay in place. It has to be done quite regularly, especially with quite a high octane performance. It's obviously got quite a narrow base and it's trying to support quite a lot of hair. So sometimes that connection will break, but it's mostly gluey product and heat to try and convince the hair that that's where it wants to stay. Prosthetic. So, as you can see, we have a little prosthetic scar on Min here. Uh, Zach has a very distinctive scar. So I made a sculpt out of monster clay, cast it in silicone, and then run many, 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 many casts in encapsulated silicone to try and match your skin tone and get the best blend I can. I use alcohol activated paints to colour it. Oh, it's attached with Prozade. Because it's encapsulated silicone, I use an alcohol-based cap plastic, which allow me to melt the edges with 99% IPA, isopropyl alcohol, and blend them out to try and get a very smooth transition between prosthetic and skin. So this is the Buster Sword, and it's got a wooden base on the underside using a handle and then a strut that goes like one side and the other to give it support. Ah. So the blade is made from plastic oak. I wanted to make sure the blade had some rigidity to it so that it wouldn't easily dent. The body of the sword is foam board on the underside with uh, an EDA foam skin. These details are actually strips of leather, as is the bottom section of the sword, the gold tip on either side of the handle. This is a red leather wrap that I had to dye red and stitch along the edge. That bit's actually leather as well. These parts I made a monster clay sculpt, then I made a mould with silicone, and I used lots of random bits of off-cut warbler to cast them. There are various struts inside the sword to hold it up and make sure it isn't gonna like collapse in on itself. What's the biggest challenge in creating a prop this big? What's the biggest challenge? That's got to be weight. You don't want to make it too heavy because then you can't carry it around at the con <laughs> and you'll have to, you know, have little bricks and it'll be really hard to perform with. Okay, so that's how we made our costumes for the video contest. I hope you enjoy our performance. Bye-bye! <laughs>